This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. We're out here at a house. I'm gonna walk you in here. This is day two of a kitchen cabinet painting process, and we're gonna show you what it looks like. Usually day one, typically, we're gonna come out and prep the cabinets, set up our spray booth, and do all the spraying. Day two is typically putting everything back together. Doing kitchen cabinets, an average set of kitchen cabinets usually is a two-day process. So we're gonna show you a little bit about what it looks like on day two doing cabinets inside this house. We're, this is probably, it's about noon right now. Yesterday we got here eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm gonna show you the cabinets right here. Here's the kitchen itself right behind me. This is where we staged and did all the spraying and all the prepping. We had, all the booth is torn down now, but this was where we were hanging everything, spraying. The booth was right here in this area. It was vented out this window right here, the booth and everything. And here's our kitchen cabinets that we painted. So I'm gonna, give you maybe like a 360 degree view of this area right here. These were golden oak cabinets. I don't have anything to show you, but just a standard oak. And when we got here, we set up the booth. We took the cabinets apart, did our numbering system on all the cabinet doors, masked off the boxes. We put a, use a primer surfacer to do two coats of primer surfacer. We did aqua coat, which is a grain filler to help fill the grain. If we don't do any of the grain filling, these cabinets would be really really grainy and being painted white they wouldn't look very good so we did the grain filler and then we did two top coats I think we might have did off that fine journeyman John here he was the one spraying these and we were teaching Captain Zach how to spray so um, we'll find out how many top coats we ended up spraying but here's everything got everything you know this is a lot of stuff you know being covered furniture and stuff like that we had this all booth off so that was it outside the booth right there and here we got john we'll bring john in here this is our table right here where we were you know filling our lacquer um our cup gun and everything right here and mixing our lacquers and thinning them and everything so john we're gonna walk in here and um, we're putting things back together. We got Captain Zach putting things back together. Why don't we grab, um, John, you can grab one of the doors and we do get a lot of questions. Um, how we go about uh, touching up the holes in the doors because we're typically drilling holes in the doors we have this system you have, you have to watch some of our videos how we spray our doors and we can hang them and spray them with these wooden hangers but in order to hang them we hang them with these cup hooks and john show us the holes that we drill so we'll drill two very small holes in here where the cup hooks are going to screw into and the hole is just a little bit smaller than the thread on that the cup hook that you're going to be using but we always spray them on the side that can't be seen so this is an upper door so we're going to be putting the the holes on the high side where no one's going to be able to see it when it's it's hung up there same where if this was a lower door we would be putting them on the bottom next to your toes where you won't see them yep so if we're gonna fill yep. them in what we're gonna do we'll just take a little bit of spackle we'll fill them in and then we're just gonna take a tiny little artist brush with the lacquer and touch just that one little spot up so for instance here's these doors right here when we remove these doors we're gonna remove this door label this door and we're gonna mark it and we're gonna drill our holes down here on the bottom so there's two holes on the bottom of this door and nobody's ever gonna see it so we got this door these doors right here that we sprayed there's gonna be holes on the tops of these doors right right here and nobody's ever can see them you can open this up unless i guess you were like seven feet two like shaquille o'neal or You've something like that other problems because you're hitting your head on the screen. yeah you um have <laughs> exactly so um here's this is we got a little kit right here this is kind of interesting our little kit what do you keep in this kit here john this is our little cabinet so box this is our cabinets box so in here we're going to keep any of the extra samples we've got for uh like i always like trying to spray samples with some of these different colors so we can have um, things to hand to people that so like hey here's what it's going to look like if you do this or that we've got some of our our lacquer brushes where we've got like a, a china bristle brush here's an artist brush that we'll do the touch-ups with what's that these are vinyl bumpers and so 
those will go on the backs of those doors and they keep the doors from knocking into each other repeatedly. Those are great. If you don't have them on your cabinets, you should be putting them on your cabinets. And a lot of times the cabinets, they'll have them on the cabinets, but do we remove them? Yeah, so we'll remove them anytime that we are doing these. So that's like on these, they had little bumpers. We'll pull those off and then we'll replace those when we're done. Looks like we keep some spare screws in our box too. We do. We keep the extra uh, screws for the hinges and then we also keep extra screws for the the poles and knobs just in case something happens and we need to replace one of those it's good to have those um, handy in your mind we do um, a lot of masking because you can see as you can see there's a lot of dust a lot of um, dirt in here we're gonna roll all this up and mop the floors clean it we do get questions what this red paper is we got the red paper on the countertops these are new granite countertops what the heck is that red paper John that is rosin paper and it is not completely leak proof but it is pretty much leak proof unless you're just dropping a whole gallon of product on there and letting it soak through. So if you spill something, you can wipe it up. It's not going to leak through that paper. It's a little bit different. It's more expensive than the, the brown paper that um, come in the same size rolls and stuff because this is a lot more absorbent and it's a little bit stronger than that brown paper. So um, what else can we talk about in our cabinet painting process here, John? One of the um, things we do is when we're doing these doors, we always number the doors. And so kind of our system for doing that is where the hinges come out we'll write the number inside the little uh, routed hole for those where it goes so we'll have an order that we do those in the the door fronts or drawer fronts we'll just write those on the back and cover them with tape but we'll cover those and then one of the things we've started doing recently is we've actually been labeling the hinges a and b so this is door number 19 we've got hinge 19a and 19b so 19a will go up at the top 19b B will go all down on the bottom and that saves us some time in the end from having to readjust all of those hinges to make sure all the doors hang straight. A simple labeling system is going to save you a lot of heartaches, you know, in uh, the future. So uh, here's, this is something right here. This is one of our fans and we have these box fans and we use this as our ventilation system. So uh, we do spray our cabinets with lacquers and I have, we've had questions, do the customers, um, are, are they, have a problem with the smell does the house smell really bad we came we did all the spraying yesterday we come back in here what does it smell like today do you smell lacquer you know there's a very slight lacquer smell and usually what we'll explain to people is within that first hour of us stopping spraying it'll have a strong smell we're pretty good at tenting and ventilating everything so throughout the house it's not a strong smell but there's still going to be a smell and then that smell dissipates over the next eight hours as the doors are curing and so it's going to get less and less we explain to them it's not a dangerous level of, of chemical in the air it's just the doors finishing their evaporation process but uh, you know I, I've been in a house overnight when the the doors are drying from lacquer there's a little smell but it's just more just obnoxious than anything else it's nothing dangerous we've never had any customers complain about it or and have a problem with it and typically the customers we've even had customers working um, from home in the house while we're doing the cabinets in one in one in, in since the guy's office was right on the other side of our spray booth right and and he wasn't bothered by it but these box fans will have one sitting in a window in our spray booth that's ventilating out and then we'll have another one that's pushing air through the spray booth to this fan and pushing it out and um john you're still alive I so am still alive there's been no explosion <laughs> there has been no explosion you know we we were explained by lacquer rep that you don't really have to be unless there's an open flame and you're spraying directly at it for the most part you know take safety precautions but for the most part you're not going to have an issue with a spark happening and then that lacquer exploding and everybody dying a horrible death so do you ever break out your cigarettes and light one up in the spray booth john well, no but part of that's because i don't smoke <laughs> So don't smoke, in, don't smoke okay. in your spray booth. So uh, over here, I don't know, we'll walk you. We got, John, you have this bag right here. Is this, um, I'm gonna show you this bag. Is this, is this bag related to cabinets or is this just, this is so one of our all around bags. That bag, yeah, I try to keep it not being an all around bag, but things just end up finding their way there as a home anyway. But typically I'll have a bag that has just the hand tools that we're typically using on an interior um, a, a lot of like my PPE stuff if I've got earphone or, uh, 
ear muffs, ear phones, ear protection. We'll say ear protection because that's what it's for sure called. <laughs> and uh, like a respirator, extra cartridges, things like that. So I try to keep this the bag that has mostly just brushes and clean items in it. But like I said, everything finds its home in there eventually. So it gets cleaned out a lot. Even handy tools like this? Yes. Like you don't ever leave home without that? You don't ever know when you're going to need an empty paper tube. So... I don't know. <laughs> um, but we do, you've got some spray shield. We actually sell these things in our store. Yeah, brush what covers. is it? So th these are brush protectors for, for your brushes. So that keeps the bristles all together and, and protected. So when the, the brush has been pulled out and it's in use, the, the cover will go back in the bag just so that we kind of know where it is. But um, in, in here we'll have, you know, like, uh, like flashlights or, or the, the Rover light that we use, um, some spackle knives, gloves. Um, like I said, I try to keep this, you know, kind of a clean bag and ideally it's the bag with my tools in it that I end up using. But like I said, it's kind of turns into a communal place to put everything. Um, I'm not sure why this spackle is in here, but, um, we've had some issues with that, mm -hmm. but we just have lots of it to get rid of. Um, here is, if you want to sp Spend $140 for a brush. John has a $140 brush in there. It is actually so, a nice brush. It is a nice, it is brush. A nice brush. So John's been testing out the $140 brush. We have, this is the Lucas brush and it cleans out like a dream because it is a Chinex bristle brush. I really like the oval ferrule on it. I just wish it came in a three inch instead of a, I think this is a two and a half inch brush, two inch. Yep. And this, I want to show you that this table right here, it's got a bunch of stuff sitting on it, like my video equipment stuff. But when you're doing lacquers, this system right here, I don't know if you can, here, I'll, I'll move this right here. So having a little portable table, and this is our little portable table right here to just set up to do all of your mixing, thinning of products and stuff becomes very handy. Where'd you get that table there, John? That was from our local big box a uh, hardware store and it's just it's literally like a lifetime plastic four foot by two foot table and it folds in half fits into the van easy and it saves you from having to mix that stuff on the floor or mix it on the granite countertops or things like that it just creates a nice workstation for you to set up easily and work from without worrying about what gets spilled or doesn't get spilled on it these little handy cups are great for uh, thinning out products and stuff it's got all kinds of measuring stuff this is uh, just a little cup right here it has all kinds of markings on it and nice. and if you can decipher them all um you you'd be a good mathematician um we got throwaway gloves that were go through lots of when doing lacquers and stuff like that that way you can just take your gloves off throw them away john um keeps his um handy little belt there i don't know what you call that um an a apron. vest we'll an, apron. an apron we'll call it an apron so there's a, a look at inside here what it looks like doing the cabinets i think um we'll show you down, down here this isn't sprayed right here down there mm -mm. we are going so what's to going be, on with that well the homeowner wasn't sure if they're going to put a gray color in there or leave it white so we're going to because we're spraying the rest of the man doors throughout the house with just a, a normal acrylic paint we're going to paint that section with acrylic so that if they decide to paint it gray later themselves they have the option and it's going to bond a little easier for them than if it was lacquer so there you can see that this is behind us you can see the, the entire kitchen right here that we did and this this is probably you know kind of typical of kitchens we do the size of the kitchens maybe sometimes a little bit bigger yeah this is probably on the smaller end of the kitchen by about maybe seven to ten doors give or take yep and this is a two day typically a two-day job we can do this kitchen in two days be in and out of here completely cleaned up kitchen looks brand new in two days yeah and yesterday we came in we set up and masked we applied we actually applied three prime coats to the doors and four prime coats to the boxes and then we did two top coats on each of those after that and then we just kind of leave it all hanging so it can cure overnight and then today we just get it's the second day of cabinets is always my favorite because you just get to put it all back together it looks nice when you're all done i don't have to spray lacquer you're not it's all dusty nice yeah. Not all dusty and dirty. Yeah, and people so, like it when you're done. And you're out of their house and they got a brand new kitchen. Yep. So there you have it. There's a look at what it's you know, day two of a kitchen cabinet job. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on our next vlog. Bam.